The legend has been reborn, introducing the new Hoyo de Monterey. At Hoyo, they're about craft. From sea to soil to sunshine and rain, they obsess over their labors. With skillful hands and passionate souls, they create. They do not settle. They do not concede. They are Hoyo de Monterey, and this is their craft. Experience the uniquely handcrafted Hoyo de Monterey at HoyoCigars.com. The highly sought-after Punch Rare Corojo is back for 2016. Rare Corojo is made with a dark Sumatra wrapper and fillers from Honduras, Nicaragua, and the Dominican Republic, giving you a powerful yet rich smoke. These highly coveted and revered cigars are only made in small quantities once a year, so get them while you can. This is a punch classic that you can't pass up. CAO has brought you iconic cigars over the years. Brasilia, Italia, La Traviata, done in a playful nature with a unique twist. Travel to the exciting world of CAO and back in just under an hour with any of the groundbreaking CAO World Blends. Test the boundaries of style with new age brands in the 95 rated Flathead. Honor the past with new classics like Pilon. Treat your palate to an array of flavors with Soul Fire and Moon Trance. At CAO, the experiences are limitless. So what's your next move? Welcome back, everyone, to the Stokey Geek Show. I'm your host, Paul Sidorian, here in studio with Todd LaScola from the Havana Cigar Club. And on the lines via Skype with Mr. Will Cooper. That's right. This is our Stogies of the Week, a somewhat shortened Stogies of the Week because we did a show last Thursday, and now we're doing a show on Monday. But we've got lots of cigars to review, including a cigar that I smoked on Mother's Day. It's interesting how I always work in a cigar on Mother's Day. (laughs) I don't know how it works out. It's supposed to be a day for the moms, but somehow me as the dad, I work in a cigar. I cook dinner (laughs) for the whole family, and I did so on the grill, so I'm like, well, I'm going to have a cigar. Absolutely. And I chose an Indian Motorcycle Ultra Premium Robusto in the natural wrapper. These are really good. You probably haven't tried this cigar. I have I got to get you one of these. Yeah, please do. This is one of the first production-run boxes to come uh, to hit the market. And I bought a box of them. And I tell you what, the looks are deceiving. This natural wrapper like looks like a medium body. Like It's a full-bodied cigar. Oh. It's, and it's got a lot of body to it. It's got a lot, like, it's almost, like, chewy. Like, the smoke, like, you could kind of, like, chew on it, you know? I like that. It's a good grilling cigar, uh, like, later in the day. Um, it's got a lot of strength to it. Uh, it's smoothing out a little bit in time. I didn't notice a huge difference from maybe four or five months ago when I smoked it, uh, a few of them when I bought the box. Um, but a very, very flavorful cigar. I love the full-bodied and strength of this cigar because it's not, like, over the top, but it yeah. lets you know that you're smoking it. So I think as a fuller-bodied cigar, you would like this one because I'm not a huge fan of the high. Yeah, the high. high no, I'm definitely more of a one, medium, this is medium that, plus to medium this full. This is one that is like a full-body, full-strength cigar that smokes more like a medium. Well, I don't know if that makes any sense to you, but. um, Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, in terms of the flavors, it, they're full. Yes, but they're not going to weigh heavy on your palate, and you're not going to get a heavy nicotine buzz. The natural's got a little more pop to it than the Maduro, I think. It does. Maduro, yeah. I almost smoke in the morning with, with coffee. And the natural, yeah, you know, I don't think I could handle it. Like, it would <laughs> blow me away first thing in the morning. You know, if, if you had to say what Phil's mildest cigar is right now in that portfolio, it's probably that Maduro. Yeah, in the Indian yeah. motorcycle. No, I totally yeah. agree. Yeah. Um, it was a good treat. I'm calling it box worthy still. It hasn't upped my rating yet. But I still think age is going to be very kind to these cigars. Yes. So, Will, over to you. I think you and I got the same. It was an abbreviated week for both of us because, mm-hmm. you know, we did a show Thursday. Um, but I smoked a cigar from PDR Cigars called the uh, AFR 75, mm-hmm. um, which in the size I smoke, it's the Edmundo size. Is that a throwback is- to the Monte Cristo Edmundo? Cuban? Well, that was my question. Is mm. it what's the size? This is a six by fifty-eight. What is that Cuban size exactly? Uh, there's two t- sizes in it, the Edmundo. I want to say the larger size is more like a six by fifty-two or right. six by fifty-four Toro, and yeah. then they make a petite robusto in the Edmundo. Both okay, are very yeah, good. They smoke bo- the Cuban great. sizes. They smoke very different. Yeah, yeah, and this one's got. Um, I mean, this one has a Bahique type of look to it in terms of its. Uh, mm. Of its banding, but it is a Maduro, um, and it's another. I, I was on a lot of San Andreas the last week, but this kind of ended the San Andreas. Um, I really found some good San Andreas, and this this was one of them. Um, I had not smoked the AFR uh, seventy five in this size, but I remember uh, when we had Robbie on from PDR, he had told me 
to try this cigar in the bigger size. He thought he thought this blend worked mm-hmm. better in the bigger size, and he's right. Um, I thought it was a tremendous cigar. Uh, it has that espresso and chocolate and coffee notes. I mean, a lot of those you're gonna get from that cigar. So if you like if you like those flavors without it being an infused cigar, I think this is gonna be the uh, the, the, the the cigar for you. It's it's a bold it's a bolder cigar in the PDR portfolio. I'd say it's in that medium to full range in both strength and body. There, um, I thought this cigar, in terms of comparing it to some of the smaller size in the line. The flavors were more robust. I like some of the change-ups the flavors did with this size. I gave it a box-worthy cigar. Definitely the bell of the ball on the AFR 75 line. Nice. Yeah. I smoked the Quesada 40th Anniversary Corona Classica. This is what that was you... a... Stogie Santa actually uh, dropped it off for us. Yeah. This was a, a really good cigar. Um, kind of on a, a more of a medium profile. Like, it had some kick to it. I wasn't expecting it by looking at the cigar. I was expecting it to be a little more mild, but it definitely had a little bit of kick to it. Uh, great cigar with coffee. Had some great flavors to it. I'm calling it a box split. I don't think I rated it as high as you did, Will. This was an Oasis cigar for me. Wow. wow. Yeah. It, so uh, you've uh, rated some of these interesting, Will. Some of these Quesada um, Anniversary Series cigars, you've rated very, very high. And I've always been a little lower in my ratings, which kind yeah, of shows the-, the differentiation between our two palettes. Yeah, and I think, you know, there is – there is some, this one – I mean, this is a very popular cigar in the Southeast, I'll say this, for whatever mm-hmm. reason. Um, I do really like this cigar. You know, it was – it was they did this with a Connecticut wrapper, and Manuel Casada did this, um, which is different than all the other 40th anniversary cigars. Um, and this was positioned as a milder cigar, but I, I agree with you, Paul. There's a little more kick with this cigar than, than p- people say. Um they this is I thought the um the Corona size for this cigar was, was fantastic. I I I actually just smoked the one, um right before I didn't smoke the one Stogie Santa gave me. So but I had smoked this right before I I came. Mm-hmm. Um just kind of uh I didn't review it or anything again, but it was still at an Oasis level in my book. I really wow. love this cigar. Interesting. Yeah. It makes me want to get more and try them again. I have although plenty. we've been split. Have... No matter how many of I'm smoke, we're we're split on certain yeah. cigars. Yes. We'll so read you... Oasis, and I'll smoke it, and I'm like, dude, it's still like box split or box worthy for me. And like I'll stand behind it. I'm like, I know you're Oasis, but it just goes to show you that our, like our Oasis rating doesn't always match. Well, no, no and, I mean, and it's not going to because everybody's yeah. a little bit Everyone's different. different you know? We all have different palates. And no we one's all... right or wrong in the rating. No. I mean, no different than wine I, or we all three smoke or... a lot of cigars, right? And we're, sometimes we're just different. Right? Absolutely. So yeah, Todd, what is kind go ahead, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, we're not different in a bad way. We're just yeah, different. Yeah, it's different. Ex- yeah, level. It's, yeah. Per- it's personal preference. No different Absolutely. than wine, scotch, exactly. anything else. So, Todd, what have you been smoking that uh, caught your attention recently? Um, actually, there's a uh, – and this is going to be unusual, and, and this is a good example of – because I know Paul and I have talked about this. Um, I've been smoking a little bit more of the Padron Connecticut. You like and you I like do this like cigar that cigar a lot. And it's growing. I have to say that's a cigar that's growing on me, which is – a. It's so weird to say about a Padron, to say that it's growing on me, But right? it's so but different than... The Connecticut is growing on me. My ratings have gotten higher and higher the more I smoke of it. But I, I really enjoy that cigar. And um, you've been smoking quite a few of them. I've, smoked, I've smoked quite a few of them. And that's a, it's, it's a good example of... Now, granted, that's more in my profile anyway, but, I mean, that's a strong Connecticut for me. It is a strong that's, Connecticut That's a late you. afternoon yep. Connecticut yeah. for me. Yeah, I agree. Um, the larger ring gauge, not so much. My, you know, yeah, I think the smaller size, smaller the smaller smaller ranges are a little better. I agree, little, and a little bit stronger. Yeah, um, yeah. and it, it was it was ironic because I was sitting with um, Rudy and um, and George mm-hmm. at the show um, in the morning smoking it, and they go, "Yeah, well, you know, this is a little light for us even at five a.m." <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can. <laughs> and see I'm that. sitting there going, I "I'm smoking it, it at nine a.m." with them going, "I'm going to need a break after this." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, that's a, that's got a lot of body to it. it There's a lot going on. Oh, I think a... age is being very kind to that cigar. I thought that when it first came out, it had a little bit of that like kind of bitterness component, but that has definitely dissipated as the more that cigar ages. Yep. So, and and, and we, we spoke about it earlier. I, I smoke a lot of Laura or Preferito. The yes. Preferito Connecticut is one of my great favorite cigar. sticks. Great, great cigar. Um, and that Corona size that you have, the, oh, the Preferito in Corona yeah. in the Connecticut is the Connecticut special is, cigar. It is. Yeah. It is, it, it, which now we know they're going to have in, in part of their regular line. We're mm. one of the few with it because it was done That's limited awesome. for, for an, you know, when Manuel came up and did his blending seminar. Um, and I'm glad they're adding it. I was very happy yeah. to hear that today yeah. that they're adding it to the line because it's really a great, it is. great cigar. It is. I think it's one of the best of the Coronas Absolutely. that you have. Well, it's hard to pick your favorite, but I think the Connecticut worked the best in that Corona. Yes. It's hard to find a smaller 
smaller well, rate gauge in the black uh, diamond in the uh, in the Connecticut though. Yes, like I see they have a Connecticut Lancero as part of their releases, right? They're going to release that Lancero, no, no. or no, no Lancero is going to be in the Corojo. It's only going to be Corojo Nestor okay. size, um, which I'm very much but looking forward to. Smaller Connecticuts tend to be few and far between. Absolutely. If someone says I want a small, mild cigar, there's only certain places you can yeah, go. Li- you know li- what I mean? Like the Leon Jimenez, yes. which is also a Laura yes. cigar. That that and that's a petite Corona. That's and, a small. But that, cigar. And it has a true mild cigar. Mild cigar, but it's got good flavor. I awesome smoke in the morning with coffee. M- yep. For me, morning coffee, the robusto size yep. actually is my favorite size with I that. Agree. Um, you know, like I said, the early day cigars are the Jimenez. It's yes. Um, the Epernay. Robusto. The, uh, illusion, uh, the, uh, sorry, A.J. Fernandez, um, New, New, World, New, New World, World, Connecticut. New World, Connecticut. Is a sorry. very good cigar, too. Absolutely. Especially for the price point, too. Yes. And I, I think price point is very um, important when we talk about a morning coffee cigar. If you're going to have a cigar every morning with coffee, you got to be conscious of price. Yes. Right? You can't go really high. Well, in, the Pedro and Damaso is kind of, it's tough to do every morning and coffee. It, it's, it's expensive. It is. And, and, you know, the three of us do smoke a lot of cigars. And mm-hmm. it's, you know. Yeah. Price does does matter. Like I said, I, I, I smoke a decent amount of preferitos, but I find I smoke more more of the cellos, right? Because there's a big difference between twenty two and fifteen. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a it's a big mm-hmm. difference. Um, yep. I smoked a Connecticut cigar that was really good. Uh, the CEO Havana Daydreaming Robusto. Well, what's yeah. the story behind the cigar? You sent these up to us. Yeah, these were courtesy of General Cigar. Um, I kept had these sitting from the trade show. Mm. So they, oh, they, wow. they gave it. Um, so what uh, CAO did at the trade show, and this one kind of was a little low key, and I was surprised about it, but they actually launched a brand of cigars around Jimmy Buffett. Um, so there's two cigars. There's a Margaritaville, which is a flavored cigar and a very good flavored cigar. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a pina colada flavor, actually, and I was shocked. I liked it a lot. And then they did a traditional cigar, a milder Connecticut shade, which is the Havana Dra- Daydreaming, which uh, both Margaritaville and Havana Daydreaming are Jimmy Buffett songs. So um, this was I, – I, um, I thought this was an interesting smoke, Paul. I, it was interesting. Uh, our production engineer Mark and I both smoked this this morning. And um, I, I, it is weird how you describe like it tastes like tobacco. But, like, this cigar tastes like tobacco. tobacco. I mean, all cigars are obviously tobacco, but, like, right. this one just kind of had that tobacco, had a, a little bit of a bitterness component and a little bit of a sweetness component, yep. um, but very much a traditional tobacco kind of feel to it. Um, but it was good. Like, I would call this one a fiver in my book. Uh, it was a good cigar. It's not one that really commanded my attention, but one that complimented a cup of coffee and that I would smoke in the morning every once yeah. in a while. Yeah, I would say the same thing. It's I don't think it's very. I don't have the price in front of me with that one, but mm-hmm. I don't think it was a very pricey cigar. It um, it's a cigar you can give to a occasional or a new Correct. smoker, um, yeah. and they could get some good flavor from it. Yeah, absolutely. So I would agree with you on that. <clears throat> this is a, a traditional Connecticut that um, a traditional Connecticut in my book with a five rating is pretty good. I think like, I, in my, like that's pretty. I'm because you know, I'm pretty overly critical. Yes. I actually I'm overly critical of Connecticut cigars yes. because yeah. I smoke so many. Um, so to have a tra- that traditional uh, format and characteristics command a five on my rating is actually saying a lot for the cigar, to be honest with you. Yeah, and and that's I think the you just that the way you cage that is traditional Connecticut. It's v- yeah. it's not trying to do anything different. No, yep. but it was good, good clean taste. Yeah, clean yeah. tobacco taste is what I would say. Back to you, Will. You guys there? Yes. Yep. Uh-oh. Hello. Hello. We oh, you're getting the, the message, Will. You're getting the your hello? bandwidth is doing bad things message. I don't you think you can hear. You guys us. there? Yeah. <clears throat> can I hear you? Here we go. Oh, wait, the, the message. You, you should away. be can back you right now, now, Will. You should be back now. No, he's still not. Can back. you hear me now? You guys there? I can hear you, but you can't hear us. We can talk about Will behind his back now, and he can't <laughs> hear us. Hello, Will. Hello. <laughs> That's funny. That's usually yes. you cut cuts out both ways, but yeah, it's like cut off like one way. There's been some major internet out- outages lately. Yeah, it, it goes. It goes well. Yeah, oh no, no in, in Rhode video. Island, all of Cox it started in yeah. the southern part of the state, and now is covered. It's I, you know, spoke with people on cell phones today mm-hmm. <laughs> up in the northern part of the state and on the other side of the bay over in mm. Barrington, and everybody's everywhere is having huge internet problems. Fortunately, you know, we're fire. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Are you there, Will? 
Yeah. Yeah, I'm here. Something okay, happened. good. Because I didn't want to talk about my last cigar without you because it's so interesting. But I'm I got a couple. Yeah, yeah. You got a yep. couple more. Yep. I have an interesting one, too, is my last one. Okay. So l- let me give you my less than interesting one first. Um, I smoked the uh, Henry Clay Stalk Cut, mm-hmm. which is the regular production Henry Clay that they've released. Um, it uses a – so everyone knows about the tattoo that was one Pete Johnson did. Yeah. That was a limited one. They came out with a Henry Clay Stalk Cut, uh, a similar but not exact blend. Um, I know there's a, couple, there's a different vintage wrapper on that, which is a Connecticut Broadleaf, and I think there's some different priming. That latter part, I'm, I'm, I'm making more of an assumption um, from tasting it. I think there's different pri- – it's a very different cigar than the tattoo. But um, – it was a solid cigar. Now, when I, I was a little more kinder on the tattoo than some other people because mm-hmm. I thought it aged out well. I think this one is kind of earlier <laughs> in the life cycle. It, it's better than the tattoo was with about a month of age on it, right? <laughs> but, gotcha. But, but the tattoo, after about six months of age, I think I understand what they were coming around for. So I don't think this one's quite there yet, but I think it's going to get better. Uh, solid flavor to this thing. Um, got a great natural tobacco note. It's... Um, it's got a little <laughs> cocoa. There's a nice little red pepper that you get on the retro hail with it. Um, it's probably strength wise medium body. It's medium to full for the most part. Uh, solid cigar. I'd give it a fiver <laughs> right now, and I think it's got potential to go up. Excellent. Yep. The last cigar on my list, Will, is the uh, by San Lucia. It's the uh, Lechia Lucador El Gringo Frog Splash. Yeah, and as unique as a cigar as this is, it ha- carries a unique name to go with it. And I thought, Will, that this was clearly an eighty ring gauge, but you're saying it's a seventy ring. Well, because it's box pressed. The box pressing, it yeah. felt to me, even with the box press, like it was an eighty. Just yeah. holding but, it. But did you see that box press? It's a very, um, it's a flat box press. It I mean, is. It's... I mean, they box pressed the crap out of this. Cigar. Oh, okay. So you're gonna yeah. get a lot of. Yes, it's, a rectang- it's more of a rectangular press on that thing. Absolutely. And uh, what's the length on it? Is it is it a five by seventy? Four, Four. by seventy. Four by seventy, which just makes it like a really weird size cigar, which is fine. I like smoking different size cigars. Uh, it, it helps mix things up. Um, I do have to say that like the blend and the the flavors were really interesting. Um, four and it, a half, Paul. That's a four and a half. I apologize. Four and a half. Okay. Four yeah. and a half by seventy. Um, the flavors were really interesting. I got like an herbal component to it, Will. Very I, much. I, yeah, it had like this weird, not like Davidoff or Avo, like herbal and not Candela herbal, but it had this very unique herbal component, which I liked about the cigar because it was just so different than anything else yeah. that I had smoked. But coupled with that herbal was like a lot of like some earthiness and it had a lot going on in the blend and they used some was pencil- there like a mineral i got a little bit of a mineral component to that thing too i, w- I would i you know if you I, I don't know if i got the mineral component but i could definitely see where you're going with that will because it was yeah. just there was a lot of different flavors going a lot on. of lot going a lot on. of different tobaccos too they had some pennsylvania broadleaf in the filler i want to say um and some other yeah. very the blend is just very interesting i don't have it in yeah. front of me but the blend is very very interesting the thing that did it for me about this one is the size like so you know when you go to a restaurant and you order like an awesome sandwich and you can't buy they it. give you the sandwich and it's it's like five or six inches high and you can't bite into the whole thing. And the sandwich is awesome, but like your mouth just isn't designed to bite into something <laughs> that large. That's what it was like smoking this cigar. Like even though it had the box press, putting it in my mouth was kind of, it was the same mental like brain stimulation as trying to eat a sandwich that was too big. And, and I was saying that to Keith, and he was, he was definitely yeah. relating to that. He used to work in the – he works still today in the restaurant industry. And he's like, yeah, a lot of clients have, like, given me the sandwich. And he's like, the sandwich is great, but, like, you need to make it smaller. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's <laughs> like, an yeah. awesome flavors in sandwich. But, and That's that a good was analogy. This, that That's was a this, really good analogy. And that was this cigar. Yeah. Like, it was just too bi- – and I'm not opposed to large ring gauge cigars. We review cigars all the time on this show. I get the whole big ring gauge thing, and a lot of them smoke great. But – this one, great flavors, but just the format and presentation was off. So much so that they make the cigar in a lot of other different sizes as well. I think there's four or five other different sizes in this line, correct? Yeah, yeah. I want to try it in those other sizes. Because yeah. I think the blend's going to be spectacular in those and other sizes. And let's face it, regardless of ring gauge size, th- there's something about the comfort when you yes. smoke a cigar. Yes. Whether it's the firmness of the cigar, 
when I went back and smoked something that was a smaller ring, in fact, I think I was smoking a Fratello White, I was like, oh, wow, there's something like I can actually smoke. The, so the size and the characteristics of this cigar, like it took away from the smoking experience, uh, in my opinion. For that reason, and that reason only, I rated it a try one. I think the blend is spectacular. I think it did a fantastic job with the blend. This size just was not uh, something that was comfortable to smoke. It didn't play to the smoking experience. Some people may like that. That's why I rated it a try. You may try this cigar and like that big ring. Yeah, it, it's, and that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Some people like eating gigantic sandwiches. And all them are, I love sandwiches, too. Like, that's awesome. Um, but this cigar, it, it, the whole thing, too, part of it was, I think, me. I tried to cut it with some scissors. And even the scissors weren't big enough to cut it. So when I cut it, like, I had bits of the cap and the wrapper coming off. So if you're going to, my advice is when you're going to cut this cigar or any ring gauge cigar that's above a 70, um, make sure you've got the proper cutter. I think you have some uh, we inexpensive actually have plastic it, ones. We that have are meant inexpensive for an 80s, 80s yeah. that were made, yes, you know, for the you know originally the Asylum and the eight, the other 70 and 80 ring gauge cigars out there. Use one of those. Get something yeah, that you, you know is gonna is gonna cut it well. In that larger ring gauge. Because I tried the scissors and, and that was a huge mistake. And of course, I mean, in that size, when you, when you box press it too, it's it's almost no natural cutter for it. No, yeah, because the cutters are meant for a round. Most cutters are meant like this cutters. Well, this one actually would. I should have probably used. Uh, be even this one would have been kind of small. Yeah. This one would have been small too. Yeah. I don't think I, I have put, a cutter I, here I, in the studio. I put I put two bullet cuts in it. That's a good. I, uh, I you know <laughs> you know what will this yeah. could have been a three bullet cut like you did with uh, one of your eighty ring gauge cigars. Yeah, yeah. I would do three because it's square. You could get three, three bullet in cuts in there. You probably could get three. I did two with it. I remember. And the wrapper's kind of fragile on it too. So yeah, this cigar when I so these were also from the trade show. Yeah. Um, in that same group, and and this is when General was uh, distributing La Silla. Mm-hmm. Um. Well, let you, let you. Um, but this cigar was kind of in Sam's portfolio. This one, I think, was kind of forgotten about. It needed some age when they. That's why I put them away for a while. I thought they were young. Yeah. But they came around. They no, came the around. Is, that's yeah. why I finally sent them around. Yeah. I'm I'm gonna try this cigar in different sizes. Um, yeah. Because I really want to. I want to experience this blend again because it was very unique and I thought he did a nice job with it. It's yeah. just the size that I, I had the opportunity to try it wasn't for me. So. Yep. Exactly. Back to you, Will. Um. So this cigar is my smoke of the week, and I'm not even going to go a step further. It's one of the best cigars I've had this year. Wow. And it's the Paul Gamarian 25th anniversary. Where did you get this one? Um, I found it in Atlanta. Mm. On my last trip to Atlanta, I got a couple of them. And I didn't pick up any more of them, Paul, because they were expensive. They're 19 bucks a piece, but I'm going to pick up more of these. Excellent. Um, th- these need to be – These you need to smoke this because – um. This is, you know, Paul Gamera, this was a very quietly released this cigar. Mm-hmm. I mean, the 20th seemed to get a lot of hoopla in the 15th. I remember when those were announced, but this one was very, very quiet. When you look at this cigar, it does not look like a Paul Gamerian cigar. It's got this rich mahogany color wrapper. I was going to say, it looks reddish, yeah. It's red. It, it is red. It's a little more light on it in that picture, but it's more of a, of a mahogany color to it. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's the darkest wrapper I've seen him work with. They don't tell you anything about the blend, other than it's a, it's, it's a Havana C binder, which is Paul Gamarian typically doesn't talk about his blends, from what I understand. Six by fifty-two Toro. Now, typically, what I've discovered with the Paul Gamarian cigars is they kind of start out a little slow, and then the flavors just mm-hmm. explode on this thing, and that that is what what you get with this cigar. I mean, there were just the flavors were coming at me left and right. Um, just there's a nice woody component to it. Um, there's a mushroom note. If I, if I, a mushroom note. Wow. And here's the thing. Wow. I'm not the only one who said there was a mushroom note on it. <laughs> really? Okay? Yeah. So there's a, there's kind of a, but it works with this blend because there's other, there's a, there's plenty of other flavors you get with this. You know, you get, um, there's some nice spice you get to it. There's a, a great natural tobacco and cedar component to this thing as well. The flavors will change up throughout. Um, the only thing I, and, and I, this kind of is the only thing that prevented me from throwing an Oasis rating on this cigar. Towards the end, the flavors muddled a bit. Mm. So uh, there was so much, I think at the, at the end of that, and each time I smoked it, they they kind of muddled a bit. Um, but in general, I got so much enjoyment from that cigar. I, it was, maybe it was time to put it down anyway. I gave, it's, it's, it's also a cigar that's not very strong. It, it's, it starts out mild to medium in strength and then becomes a medium. But I'd say it's more like a medium to full in terms of body. And um, I gave it a Chuck Norris. 
Like awesome. I said, if it, wasn't, if it wasn't for the end, I might have thrown the Oasis rating on it. That's but, awesome. But, I can't wait to try this. Paul Gamera yeah. is one of the, the favorite manufacturers. Yeah, no, P- yeah, PG he, does a great job. Makes yeah, some I, awesome, awesome blend. We've rated tons of them on the Stoic Geek Show largely. Mr. J's on a smoke shop has, has given us access to all of his blends and We've just sampled tons they didn't of br- them. I don't, I don't, I don't want to say. I don't know if they brought this in. I got to ask. I don't know Sam. if they did. Yeah, I don't know if they did either. Talk- now, usually he'll tell me, "I smoked this and I it was great," or "I yeah. smoked it and it sucked." And he didn't give me either feedback. This is very different than the 15s and the 20s, is what mm-hmm. I'll tell. You. So, so oh, I can't wait to smoke this one. Yeah, this one we got to get some more hands. Like 19 bucks, but well worth it. Awesome. Um, I don't believe that we have <clears throat> a contest for this week, do we? We have a, we don't have a contest or we don't have a contest question. We don't have a contest. Okay, so we yeah. don't have a contest. No contest this week. Uh, maybe the contest we did two last week, so we're taking a week off from contest. But well, we may not. Yeah, we may. Hopefully, we can continue. <laughs> hopefully, we can continue the contest. Yeah, yeah. yeah it depending on what the FDA so says. That's right. Um, yeah. But you can subscribe to all the Stoey Geek shows at StoeyGeeks.com. We have the main Stoey Geek show, Stoey Geeks News, Stoey Geeks Shorts. Some new shows in the works as well. So make sure Real you check back at the, yeah, check out stoegeeks.com. Uh, you can watch the live shows every Monday night, 6 30 p.m. Eastern time at stoegeeks.com forward slash live. Thanks everyone for watching. Thanks to Todd the Schooler from the Havana. Thanks, Cigar Paul. Club. And Will, always good to speak and with you. We'll and good to see you la- and seeing oh. you last week was great also. That's it. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, and and now Mondays come by more on Mondays. Please. Absolutely. We'll do. That's it. And that concludes the Show Geek Show for this evening. Thanks everyone for watching. We'll see everyone next week, Monday, 6 30 p.m. Eastern time. There you go.